give it up for Sam. Here we go, buddy. We'll put it on the clock right there. All right. <clears throat> My name is Sam Wiegert, and I want to talk about creating a sense of belonging. Um, Anthony Robbins says that there are two, the two greatest fears of every human being are that we are not enough and that we won't uh, be loved. And so a lot of us uh, struggle with that sense of belonging. I know I did growing up as a kid. I was uh, homeschooled. I was the typical homeschooled weird kid that would tuck my shirt into my shorts and would just, um, I, I, was, I was a little bit unsocialized, just to, to put it mildly. I, I can remember this one time where we were sitting around in a circle and I just desperately wanted to belong um, growing up. I, all my friends at the time were older than me and I wanted to be accepted by this group of people. And I remember one time we were sitting around in a group, um, we were just sitting around in the yard, and all of my friends were sharing one thing they wanted to accomplish uh, in their life. And I was thinking, as it was coming around to my turn, I remember thinking, not exactly what I wanted to accomplish, but I remember thinking, well, what could I say that would impress them, where they would um, think I was a cool guy, I was one of them. And so when, um, one thing that none of my friends had was money, so I figured if I said I wanted to make a lot of money, then... Uh, they, would, they would think that was cool. So finally, when it got to my turn, I kind of puffed out my chest and had the courage to stand up and say, I was, by the way, I was uh, 11, 12 years old at this time. And I said, uh, one day, I will be a millionaire. And my buddy next to me just looked over at me and scoffed. I was like, come on, Sam. Like, that just, it just put me down. And I was like, that's not important. Money's not important. And I remember thinking in that moment, I will show you, and maybe if one day I'll show you, then you'll, you'll accept me. So I struggled with belonging growing up. Uh, in 1999, um, a young high school student uh, entered a high school and with his friend shot up the high school, uh, killing 15 other students and injuring 25. And... His, uh, the, the mother of the shooter said in a TED Talk, I actually just watched the TED Talk last night, that her son struggled with isolation, struggled with hopelessness, and struggled with a feeling of perfectionism and self-reliance. He struggled with belonging. If you don't believe me, I did some research last night, too, on um, suicides, and I just kind of was like following that path, and I don't know if you know this or not, but um, suicides, uh, there are 121 suicides that happen uh, every single uh, day. I didn't know this, that it's the second leading cause of death among youth between the ages of 10 and 35. So we struggle with belonging. I believe there's something that we can do about it. This led me to kind of do even some more research, and there was this guy, Albert Snyder, and he's a leading expert on people who end up completing suicide, and he says that among all people who commit suicide, he said they all struggle with a sense of hopelessness, isolation, self-reliance, and perfectionism. Belonging is very important. I believe it's very, very important. You know, what's even more interesting about that is I, as I was listening to that, I said, wow. I, I think of myself, like in our culture today, we celebrate self-reliance. We celebrate perfectionism to a certain extent. So what can we do? What could we do to elevate the sense of belonging in our communities, in our culture, in our families, uh, maybe just by even 1%? What could we do? I, I believe there's three things that we could do, and I want to share those with you. Uh, number one, we can speak to other people's potential, not their actuality, not where they are right now, but we can speak to uh, where they could be. We can speak to where they are becoming. Uh, my dad did an amazing job of this. I was teaching martial arts when I was 11 years old. And uh, my dad was taking my class because he wanted to get his black belt from his son who was teaching classes. And I remember coming home every night after I would teach a class with my dad in it. And I would kind of tiptoe in. And I just remember thinking, like, I wonder what my dad thought of my class. And I was so fortunate because my dad never missed, never missed an opportunity to say, great class, Sam. Amazing class. Not one time did he miss that. But I thought about this. I thought about, looking back on it now, I thought, those classes weren't good. I was 11. I was just starting to teach martial arts. But he spoke to my potential. So if you're a coach, if you're a, if you're a parent, in whatever culture you are in, whoever your people are, are you speaking to their potential or are you just speaking to what you see right then and there in front of you?
So number one was speak to their potential. Number two is creating a community and an identity. Uh, my family also did an amazing job of this. My family, my dad would take us up and down the grocery store aisles, and he would tell us, you know, Mr. Sam, we're, we're Uyghurs. We don't buy junk food. We eat healthy. You're a Uyghur, you know? And we were, he, gave, he gave me an identity, something that was a little bit exclusive. You know, this is how we act. This is how we are. And so are you doing that for the people in your community? Are you creating a sense of community? We do it in our martial arts schools. I run a company called Uplevel Martial Arts. And as, a, as martial artists, we, we teach them that, you know, when you put that white belt on, when you put that black belt on, you are a black belt. Even if that belt isn't black quite yet, it might be a white one, but you can start acting like a black belt right now. So it gives them an identity. Are you creating an identity for the people in your community? Are you creating a culture for them? And number three is vision. Creating a vision, constantly painting a picture of a better future. Constantly creating a picture of a better future. In martial arts, we do that by always having another goal. If you're a yellow belt, you want to become an orange belt. If you're a black belt, you want to become a second degree black belt. If you're a 10th degree black belt, which is like the highest, you want to become a master. And we create, I believe these things, speaking to potential, creating a community, and then always painting that picture of a vision. I believe those are the antidotes, if you will, or could be antidotes to the hopelessness that we all have struggled with at some, at some point in time, probably in our own lives, and that a lot of other people struggle with but don't reach out for help for. Say this with me. Speak to potential. Speak to potential. Create a community. Create a community. And, painting a vision. and painting a vision. You know, they say that you can live three weeks without food. I've heard it said that you can live three days without water, three minutes without air, but not even three seconds uh, without hope. So I believe together we can up-level the level of community and the level of belonging we feel in the world by following these three things. And I want to do that through my company by creating uh, 74 million, that's 1%, that's 1% of the world's population by creating 74 million black belts. Because I believe through that, that's at least my lane. I can create community and hope in the world. Thank you very much. Sam, beautiful, buddy. Awesome, awesome.